Natsu Dragnil is one of those anime characters that you can't help but love, and people have counted him among their favorites for a long time. He's a powerful dragon slayer who's always fired up, and he's the heart and soul of the fairy tale guild. In my top 5 fairy tale characters, which I did a long time ago, many people commented that they put him in their top 5, if not their number 1. So, for such a popular character from one of the best known anime, what is it that makes him appealing to us as an audience? Well, to start with, Natsu wears his heart on his sleeve. He's an open, honest person, and we can usually tell what he's thinking. This is a popular trait for main characters to have, and it's important for us to know that we can trust him. We can get invested in his relationships and the plans he makes, because we know that he's not going to turn around and do something cruel or deceptive. Honesty is a likable trait to have in real life, too, so it makes sense to me that this is something that people love about Natsu. His straightforward personality also shows in his fighting style, with his fire powers being purely offensive and very head-on, which is a really cool way to show that side of his character. Being such an honest person, Natsu is also an incredibly loyal friend. He cares about his friends and fellow guild members more than anything, which of course is something we can admire. Underneath this loyalty is a good nature and a strong sense of justice. So when Natsu succeeds, it always means that good wins over evil. And seeing Natsu have such strong and interesting relationships with the other characters means we care about those characters too. The fairy tale guild is like his family. Whether it's Mira Jane mothering him, his sibling rivalry with Grey, or treating Wendy like his little sister. It's heartwarming when we see them together and how much they love Natsu, especially as he's been with them for such a long time. However, he is sometimes selfish, such as when Fairy Tail disbanded and he didn't tell anyone where he was going. He also has a habit of jumping into things without thinking about the consequences, or how it'll affect his teammates. Not always being a considerate friend makes him less of a black and white character, which is way more interesting than a character who's flawless. We know that his intentions are good, but can't expect him to be perfect, and that is what I call great storytelling. His reckless behavior is played for laughs too. Natsu is often given the role of the comic relief character, due to his hot-headed and fiery personality. He's always ready for a fight, and paired with Grey, who's down to beat him up any time, this is a constant source of comedy. Natsu is also one of those characters whose facial expressions are exaggerated, so we know when to not take him too seriously. Even though some people may find this kind of comedy a bit annoying after a while, I think it's balanced enough with the show's serious moments to continue to be funny. An impulsive character who gets fired up at a moment's notice is a staple in anime, and that definitely contributes to Natsu's popularity. Due to the frequently comical nature of Natsu's role in this story, his weaknesses might be seen as somewhat superficial, particularly his motion sickness. It doesn't have a really big impact on the story, and when I first saw it, I thought it was too minor to offset his strength. The other side of this, though, is that motion sickness ties together all the Dragon Slayers, being a weakness they all share, and it shows how solid Natsu's bond is with Happy, because the only time he doesn't get sick is when Happy's carrying him. So, even things that don't seem like that big of a deal at one point in the story can turn out to be important, which is why something as trivial as motion sickness is worth considering when it comes to Natsu's character. Continuing on flaws and weaknesses, Natsu is the type of character that sometimes makes mistakes. Whether it's caused by his impulsiveness, or just being a bit of an idiot, he's been known to make the occasional error that causes problems for him. It's not just that he's sometimes overpowered by an incredibly strong opponent, but that his own judgment of a situation isn't always perfect. For example, during the Adolus arc, Natsu doesn't understand how limited magic is here, and ends up wasting it. However, he is sometimes exceptionally clever, coming up with unique strategies in battle that his adversaries aren't able to counter. He thinks outside of the box, which at times works to his advantage, and other times to his detriment. Having a balance of intelligence and stupidity, as well as being a bit avant-garde in his thinking, keeps Natsu from getting boring. We know he's not infallible, and that he has flaws, so even though we're pretty sure he'll win in the end, we don't know how we'll do it. Will one of the other guild members have to save him? Will it all turn out to be a part of a weirdly genius plan? Or will he accidentally figure out how to boost his own powers? We don't know, and that's interesting. It keeps us watching, and it's actually pretty fun. Another important point for Natsu that's really well done is his backstory. It starts out kind of sad, as we first believe along with him that he was abandoned by Igniel, and we learn that he wants to find him. As the story grows, so does his backstory, with surprising twists and turns that keeps us on our toes. 
There's a lot of sadness and intrigue to the story, which contrasts with Natsu's warm and excitable personality. With such a complex history, he goes from being almost a stock protagonist at the start to a complicated character we all want to root for. And while Natsu wants to know more about himself, we're along for the ride with him. And there were moments that honestly had me shocked. I don't want to spoil anything major for those of you who haven't seen all the way to the end, but if you have watched most of this series, I'm sure you can think of a few plot points that surprised you about Natsu's history. So a rich and well-developed backstory makes for compelling characters, and the way Natsu's story is revealed slowly over the course of the whole series means that the longer we stay with him, the more depth he has. It's like getting to know a friend over a few years you've already attached because of all the time you've spent together. So when you find out something unexpected about them, it has even more emotional impact than if you'd known about it from the start. Many of Natsu's emotional moments also come from those times when he's been knocked back in apparent defeat. It looks like that's it, when suddenly he comes back and wins the day. As one of the strongest characters in anime, Natsu is a king of comebacks. For some people, this can come across as a bit too overpowered, but it's one of those things that fairy tale fans love about him. It's fun to wait and see what else he has up his sleeve after it seems like the end. And we get to witness some incredible moves when his back is against the wall. Over the series, he gets such a huge variety of powers, all linked to his origins as a dragon slayer with his fire specialty. And the more he adds to his pool of attacks, the more engaging the fights become. Not only that, but as viewers, we know we can rely on Natsu to pull through and eventually triumph. Again, it's safe for us to invest our feelings in him because we know he won't let us down, and that side of good will win in the end. While it can be interesting not knowing whether someone will die or live through a fight, Fairy Tale is not often that kind of anime. It's about family, cool magic, and doing what's right. So it's more fitting for the themes of the series that we have a strong comeback character like Natsu to keep us and the story safe. He might not be the first character you think of when I say character development, but Natsu's growth throughout the nine seasons of Fairy Tale has been fun to watch. As the stakes have gotten higher, we've seen him become more serious and grown up. He accepts more responsibility for his guildmates, only getting more protective of them as time goes on. His powers have grown too, and with his backstory, we slowly get more context for why he is the way that he is. But through all of that, the fundamentals of his character are still the same. He remains loyal and caring towards his fairy tale family. He keeps his sense of justice, and he finishes the series with the same positive excitement he started out with. I hate to say it again, Watching Natsu in this show is like growing up with a friend. Even though we see him change and develop over time, he's still the same old Natsu at the end of the day in the best way possible. At the end of such a long series, it's no wonder we get so attached to him and his misfit family. The final thing I want to say about Natsu is that he's just really cool. Fire powers are cool, dragons are cool, his design is cool, he's a badass fighter who gets some of the best lines in the show, he respects his opponent's power, and he never backs down from a tough situation. It's so easy to love a character who radiates power and coolness, because we want to be that awesome, and we want to be friends with someone who's that awesome. Maybe this isn't the deepest point I'll ever make, but it has to be said. Natsu is just undeniably a cool character. I'd say that covers why everyone loves Natsu Dragnail. He's a complex and compelling character with lots of admirable qualities who's come to be like a good friend to all of us fairytale fans. What do you think though? Let me know in the comments if Natsu is one of your favorites and why. With that being said though, thank you so much for watching and be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed the video. I've been Mystic Sage and I will catch you in the future with more anime content.